Hey guys, this is Richard at Official Nautil Channel and Reefs.com. We have one and only Julian Sprung here, and he's going to show us today how to use Revive. Julian? Hi. Okay, so we have here one uh, newly acquired Lobophilia coral. Mm -hmm. And before putting this coral into Richard's tank, we're going to give it a bath to uh, wash off any hitchhikers that may be there, things that we don't want ending up in the aquarium. This is the saltwater scissor. Right there. They've wrapped this one nicely so it doesn't get damaged. That is great. Yeah. We have uh, almost enough water. Are you, well, okay. I'm going to put just a little bit more so we cover it. Sure. Typically, the, the dose for Revive is about four capfuls per gallon. Okay. Um, there's a lot of leeway on that. Uh, corals with thicker flesh like a lobophilia or, or you have here a cinerina, mm -hmm. they can tolerate easily double that. Um, zoanthids, uh, zoantha species, palithoa species, they can handle triple or more. Um, Is that right? Um, we give you an idea of uh, time frame for a bath. Uh, for most corals, it, it could be anywhere from three to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the thinner tissue Acropora really don't uh, like going over five minutes, but some of the thicker tissue Acropora, you, you could go as, as much as 10 minutes and it's not a problem. It's something that, that you learn uh, with practice. Um, but for a thick tissue coral like um, Lobophilia, uh, we, we can easily do the dose up to double the dosage. Uh, this is um, maybe a little bit less than half a gallon when it's it's full. Right. Uh, so I could easily put two capfuls there and not not have a problem. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more water. What I'll I'll do is I'm give it a little shake to make sure that the product is fully mixed because it can segregate a bit in the bottle. Now, quick question, Julian. When yeah. was this um, product uh, introduced to the market? So we came out with Revive uh, approximately in 2005. It was the first of its kind. Right. Yeah. There have been um, copycat products that came afterwards. Now, what made you think of uh, like the, the formula that, that's, that's behind this? There, there was already a product on the market from Aquarium Pharmaceuticals called Melafix. And that product was developed um, to utilize plant extracts, essential oils, in that case, uh, melaleuca oil, like a tea tree oil. Um, which, as many people know, or, you know, tea tree oil is very effective in dealing uh, with skin conditions. Uh, they, it's used for people, it's used for dogs and cats. And Aquarium Pharmaceuticals came out with a product to use for fish. Um, and uh, they pointed out to me that, that it may have some application, some use uh, with corals. And in fact, we mentioned that in. And when I say we, uh, I refer to me and Charles Delbick. Uh, we, we put that reference in the Reef Aquarium Volume 3. Um, so at that time, uh, I was interested in what sorts of plant extracts uh, might be uh, useful in dealing with uh, various infections or conditions in corals. Uh, so I, inspired by uh, what I saw with Melafix, I decided to try out many different plant extracts. And, and plant extracts are basically essential oils. So I purchased a whole range of different essential oils and emulsified them and tried them uh, with various types of corals, uh, came up with a uh, proper dosage range and, and time. And I figured out uh, which essential oils uh, had uh, really useful effects. 
And it, and it turned out that a couple of relatively common ones, we didn't need to go uh, esoteric uh, in, in searching for some rare oil. Uh, they, the common ones had some very strong effects um, and in fact when combined two together there was a synergistic effect and that uh, produced the product Revive. After we brought Revive to market, um, we tried making a concentrate and that turned out not to work out very well. I Did heard I of that, that yes. Story? Yeah, yeah, basically yeah. for the people watching the video, the essential oils are so strong, mm -hmm. uh, they did a few things. One, they ate up the liner, literally mm -hmm. dissolved it. Uh, they also passed through the plastic and destroyed the pressure sensitive adhesive on the label, so the labels right. would fall off. And the process of them passing through the plastic, they would create a vacuum so the bottle would cave. Um, so the only way that we could effectively market a concentrate of Revive would be to put it in a glass or a metal package. And that's very, very expensive. And I just didn't see the advantage to doing that. I think it made much more sense to um, have it at just a, the regular full strength, which is quite strong. Right, right. Um, and if people wanted to use more, just add just more. Just have more bottles. Yeah. So we've already put the right concentration in this bath. The coral has been bathing as we've been talking. Right. I feel like Madge with palm olive. You're soaking in it right now. <laughs> um, you can aerate if you wish, or use a power head to circulate. I, I don't recommend the aeration really because it, it actually blows off the volatile component mm -hmm. in there. Uh, but since the bath is so short, if you really only have aeration as a means of moving the, the water, you can aerate it. Uh, but a power head is probably your best bet. Or, you know, just swish it around, move it around like that. You can lift the coral out and yeah. swish it. That helps to dislodge any uh, unwanted, hitchhikers. unwanted hitchhikers, they'll fall yeah. off. Yeah. Um, what I do is I, I usually have a small, like a, like a, you know, like those coral um, choosers, pickers yeah. from a vendor, you know, uh, coral shows. I use those just kind of like, kind of like swish things around, right. or like just how you grab it and just you shake can it use off. Use a, a baster as well to squirt. Right. That's a know, good way. But you don't want to be too aggressive about that. Right. So I'm gonna put my glasses on here and look and see what's happening what's coming off. I do see, I think, some small flatworms actually might be coming off of there. But this is a fairly clean coral. I'm not seeing any worms or shrimp even. Yeah, you know, when usually you see like, you know, like small bristle stars. Brittle stars, bristle worms, yeah. and yeah. Very good. I did learn uh, from public aquarium uh, aquarists that it's extremely effective for dipping jellyfish. They use it in uh, jellyfish culture. Uh, really? The, hmm. uh, the jellies get uh, copepods that um, irritate them, grow on them, and the dip will knock those off and it makes it much easier. And you uh, won't mess with the jellyfish. It doesn't mess with the jellyfish. Wow. So very effective. I got subsequently another public aquarium uh, Aquarius contacted me and said that it solved a problem they had in uh, raising cuttlefish. Uh, the eggs of cuttlefish uh, tend to get um, growths on them uh, of various different types and the dipping in Revive hmm. uh, will um, curtail that, keeps them clean, wow. and they have much more success in raising the uh, cuttlefish wow. larvae. You know, actually, I had actually a couple of uh, my followers on YouTube ask me this question before, 
Um, can you also dip this in anemones as well? Yes, anemones are just fine dipping yeah. in Revive. And is there any specific like a, like um, directions or difference in dosage? It's similar to the corals, but the anemones are tougher, so you can actually go a little bit higher dosage a little bit longer. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, another use for Revive is to help um, a coral heal when it's been injured. As I mentioned, it's effective uh, whenever you're fragging a coral, uh, whether you're using a band saw or a scissor or bone, saw, bone shear to cut and frag a coral, but sometimes corals get injured uh, when we forget <laughs> that another coral is too close to it and it stings, or if something falls on top of another coral and then, then you have basically a wound, a little tissue damage on the coral. As in the case of uh, this open brain coral, trachophilia, it has a spot about a quarter of an inch of uh, exposed skeleton. And that can uh, lead to an infection which could uh, basically kill the whole coral. Dipping it in Revive cleans it just like, uh, you know, if you get a cut on your hand and you clean the wound, um, you're more likely not to have a problem with an infection. So. I uh, highly recommend if you ever do see tissue damage like that to take the coral out and give it a short dip. Uh, it doesn't need to be an extended dip, uh, three to five minutes is sufficient. So once again, um, just wanted to say that Revive is a very simple way to prevent introducing hitchhikers into your aquarium. Hitchhikers that could take you for a long ride that you don't want to go down. Uh, they can, uh, you know, multiply in your aquarium and, and harm the corals. So you want to prevent that by dipping any new coral in a bath made with Revive. So uh, just in essence, it's uh, quite a simple thing to do as a way to prevent uh, introducing some hitchhikers that you don't want ending up in your aquarium to make a, a bath and dip the corals when you first receive them. Um, again, this is, I don't know, I'm gonna have to try that again. No problem. <laughs> Let's go. And then um, when, you, when you lift the, the product, can you lift it a little up bit to this higher? High? Yeah. How's that? That's, like that? that's perfect, yes. Okay, so we'll, okay, we'll let do me that think one more about time. what I'm going to say. Yep. So you can tell I'm tired. <laughs> it's the food. It's the food. It's doing it to me. Yeah.